The DB12 Aston Martin call this the Super Tourer. Yes, Grand Tourer wasn't big enough for this car, but neither was our garage. So, welcome to the very grand Cody Cliffs and the super back roads of the far north. Subscribe to see the first drives of New Zealand's newest and best cars driven on New Zealand roads in New Zealand conditions. <laughs>I've been hounding Aston Martin Auckland for a couple of months now for a chance to drive the DB12 and finally the stars have aligned. What is DB12? Well, the short answer is the ultimate GT. I'm going to avoid that whole grand thing. Traditional front engine rear wheel drive, long bonnet, and it's fast. Of course, 325 kilometers an hour fast, which also describes the DB11. Yes, Aston Martin's other elegant Grand Tourer. It was the finesse between the bruises, the Vantage and the DBS. A truly beautiful car complete with a V12. Which is one thing the DB12 doesn't offer. And did you get this? A four litre twin turbo V8 producing 500 kilowatts. That's 671 brake horsepower. To put that into perspective, even the ultimate DB11, that's the one with the V12 with the AMR power upgrade, still only produced 650 horsepower, well short of the DB12. An in factor in the physics, the V8 is lighter and shorter, and I know V12s are beautiful, but they're no more an Aston Martin tradition than, say, well, the straight six from a DB5. What is an Aston Martin tradition, though, is beauty, and in this case, beautiful aggression. The DB11 starts sneaking back as you move back, first with the intake for the air blade which is carried over and then the tail. That said, this DB12 is 22 millimeters wider, but you won't really spot the difference. In simple terms, this is as much an evolution of the DB11 as it is the successor. But when you see the DB12, not just for the first time, but every time, it's usually the DBS that comes to mind. That whole front stance is all muscle, where the 11 is more sinew and sleek. This is aggression and purpose, hence that super tour attack. And that beefed up styling is now shared across the entire three coupe car lineup of Vantage, DB12, and DBS. There is one area of the DB12 that isn't adopted and isn't borrowed, and that is this new look interior. You know, in the past you'd get frustrated, at best you'd tolerate the way the interior worked, the, the layout, the functionality. In this case, it is seriously good. There's a touch of, dare I say it, Porsche style to the way the buttons are laid out here, but Aston Martin have done it better. Yes, really. There's also an actual touchscreen now, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. No more old gen, this is all 2024, but still with Aston Martin style. So it looks incredible. You know, I'm doing my best to show and tell, but the truth is it's really hard to put in words the, the sort of the way this car attaches itself to all your senses, the smell and feel of the bridge of wear leather, which is hand stitched, of course, there's the sort of oral cocoon that the double glazing helps the way you feel embraced by this car. That might sound a low TT, you know I love cars, but you really do fall for this car. It is so enchanting. And on these roads, I don't mind saying, I'm smitten. You know, I know I talked about the car's power, but the truth is, it's the torque that creates the biggest impression, and what an impression too. 800 newton meters, and it's there from just 2700 RPM. That's 100 newtons more than the gruntiest DB11. It's also 185 kilos lighter than that car. The result of all that, a zero to 100 time of 3.6 seconds. Yes, that's faster than any of the DB11 V12s.
but it's not just about getting there, the DB12 will also stay there. That lighter engine, the new electronic rear diff, they combine to make the DB12 heavier at the back than it is at the front. Making this a car that turns in as sharply as it looks. On road, the new 21 inch wheels look good, yes, they're also 8 kilos lighter than the old 20 inch wheels and they fill the arches magnificently. And take note of what's around them, new Michelin Pilot Sport rubber made just for this car, delivering grip and refinement. That's partly thanks to clever foam inserts in the tyres which reduce road noise, an added bonus on these Kiwi course chip roads. DB12 also gets active suspension courtesy of Bilstein, yes another name drop and why not, they're officially called Intelligent Adaptive Dampers. Now the official line says 500% increase in bandwidth of force distribution. In simple terms the stiffer roll bars and some other fine tuning result in a car that's so secure and planted and unflappable, a lot more so than the DB11. There's something else too, I know it's a V8, not a V12, but you could feel like you're in a DBS the way this thing charges and that bulge in the bonnet. This really is a mix of extreme and restrained, old school and new school, Aston Martin style. Just take the hand-stitched leather and the clever alloy architecture or the carbon fibre torque tube, which sends power to an old school auto. You know, I say old school, but listen to that. This eight speed box is rapid, not just in the way it shifts either, but that lower final drive, talk about frisky, it adds even more spice to the mix. Yes, spice, but still the perfect mix. Aston Martin have resisted any temptation to go too far with that console. The 10 and a quarter inch touchscreen is just right. Like I said, the perfect mix of analog feel and digital smarts, which also includes an app to update your DB12 via phone. You know, I was just thinking, I mentioned the DB5 earlier, and thanks to the Bond-related desirability, it's hard to beat when you have that conversation of what is the best DB ever? But if you're really honest, and I will be, this is the best DB ever. You know, I'm going to go a bit further. When you sort of factor in the sublime comfort, the way this car feels, and then the way it goes, the unbelievable real-world performance, the sheer charisma of this car, from the V8 to the way it dances, this isn't just the best DB, this is the best Grand Tourer on the market. <laughs>